How are we getting on, mate? That's us live. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Thanks for having me on. No problem, mate. Anyway, all the viewers will be on later. Welcome to another episode of My Select Story. Delighted tonight to be joined by Martin Lachlan, former Thistle, St Johnson, Stenny, Dumbarton, Finn Harps. We'll, we'll get to all that good stuff later on anyway, mate. Um, I appreciate you a wee, a wee hour of your time, mate. As I say, we'll get through the a wee bit of the career and growing up and then we'll get torn into the Selic, mate, and some stuff about Ange and some more recent stuff. And then at the end, the, the old best of living, mate, which is an absolute nightmare. Aye, that's um, hard, mate. That's hard. Brutal, mate, isn't it? You could, you could, you could change your team fifty. You'll probably change it tomorrow once you come off it. Aye, everybody in what's been looking at me and I've been changing it every ten minutes, and I've been arguing myself at the desk and think I'm off my head. <laughs> You'll see some stuff coming up in the boat, mate. It's just if there's anybody on that there's any relevance that they maybe fire a couple of wee questions or so, and I'll, I'll chuck them up on the screen and that. No bother. Um, before we get started, mate, there's only one place for me to start. Darvel Aberdeen, mate, before we get into your career and stuff. Oh. West of Scotland, six tier team, mate, beating the Dons the other night. Biggest I'm shot, sure. biggest shot in Scottish Cup history, in my opinion, mate. I was, I watched PJ and Dax um, interview back the day with the manager and that. What a, what a result, mate, and what an advertisement for that league, mate. What did you think about it? Oh, uh, unbelievable, unbelievable. It's kind of everybody's talking about it. No, it's no a shock because you, you, everybody knows Darvel have invested uh, heavily yeah. down there with the ultimate goal of getting to the, the higher grades of Scottish football. So it was good to see, but to be honest with you, you now I don't think there's too much uh, a gap between the levels. I know, obviously, if they waste a Scotland in the Premier League, then definitely the size of club that Aberdeen are, then definitely, I it's a it's a tremendous uh, result. But when you actually watch the game, Davo played very, very well. You, I was waiting. I, I was out running uh, just before. I came in at half time uh, and seen the second half. And I was kind of waiting for the Aberdeen onslaught. But it never came. Uh, no, Davo done well. Uh, they're playing well as a team. They're leading. Uh, they're a very ambitious club, I would say. Uh, and good luck to them. Aye, I seen the crowd and all that, mate. And what, what, what do you think of this? I, I watch a lot of PJ and Dax stuff, so I've, I've had a wee bit more of an insight over the last twelve months because the two of them did brilliant for the yeah. rest of Scotland. The, the the amount of advertising they do on online and that. But what, what's your thoughts? Obviously, managing in that kind of level, um, in the new pyramid system and that. Do you think it's going to work in the long term? Uh, so I was at um, I was at East Coast Pride. I won the Lowland League year. So I, I, and I've managed Peterson won the league year. So I've kind of seen both levels: the West of Scotland up to the Lowland, up to the top. And I get beaten cow with cowed and beef and penalties to actually get uh, promoted to League Two. Um, so and I've still not watched the penalties. By the way, I'm devastated still. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, so I've seen it. And, and it used to be that your League Two teams would come and get your West of Scotland or your junior. It's no called the Pyramid, it's no called Junior. And the League Two teams would come and get them, and there was a gap in the standard. See, yeah. now, I don't think there's any a gap. I think Darvo could beat a League Two team, you know what I mean? A Lowland team could beat a League Two team. There's no a lot in it, and there's a lot of talent that could move up the, up the grades, absolutely no problem now. So I think all your... League one, league two, actually look at the levels for players. Um so I would say now and the thing that I was an advocate at the time, I was at East Bride and Celtic B and Rangers B were trying to get in the league and I didn't want it because it only benefits Celtic and Rangers. It doesn't right. benefit anybody else. So if you want to sell us, have a reserve league the way it was years ago. I remember going to Celtic Rangers games twenty thousand the same day a Saturday when you couldn't get a ticket for Ibrox and things like that. So Celtic B and Rangers B makes the league a wee bit of a laughing stock for me and Hearts as well. If you're going to have a reserve league, have a reserve league. And you actually can get Celtic and Rangers players out and loan now because they're playing in the league. So I don't think it's good for Scottish football. I think Mick Darvel had actually, I'm no on social media, I'm not that good. You're lucky I can get this on. <laughs> um, so I think Mick was actually saying if you pay 70 grand, 
you get in the low one league. I think that's what Celtic Rangers and Hearts had to fight to get in the league. So, no, I'm not a fan of the B teams in the league. But the pyramid, what I would say is, like, East Stirling come down, Berwick Rangers come down, Albion Rovers are kind of doing there. And I, I failed to go up with East Kilbride. We could beat the Cowden and beast in the playoffs. I remember, I remember the, bottom, that the bottom team should be going down. They shouldn't be. The, the, the way it worked with me, Gary Locke was the manager and took over. I don't know if you can see that, but there's something on my phone there. Um, Gary Locke took over as manager at Cowden Beath with 10 games to go. Liam Fox, the, the United manager, gets sacked. That's right. And uh, Gary Locke took over. And I think they were only like a 10 game uh, unbeaten run when they played us. They'd Scott Rumsby, Dale Carrick, Burton O'Brien. They extended a lot of players' loans. So essentially, we were only playing Cowden Beath. We were playing uh, Lewis, uh, Lewis Murphy Hearts was playing so in that game that went to penalties so essentially we were not playing Cowden Beath we were playing loans for every other team to keep Cowden Beath in the league you know so I, 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 I'm a firm believer if you're bottom of the league you get in if you win the league you go up and I think we've held these teams in league two up far too long because there were nothing below them but now it's coming hopefully it changes soon uh, it should be up and down mate you, you look at look at the waves that Cove Rangers and, and the Rosen that have made Moving I, through the league, so I uh, it should be an up and down, mate. Because the standard I, I've seen a few of the west of Scotland, there's they're, they're the drum a, a tier below, went up to Elgin, and were by all accounts very unlucky not to get at least a draw last night. By all accounts, oh, so I, no, the, I know the same probably, I would say, aye. the most successful team in the juniors now is the Rangers, and they're up there a great club and kind of won everything, whitewashed the full juniors. Who's to say that if they went up, they wouldn't hold their own, you know? So, in the next few years, I think there'll be a lot of changes. There will be, mate. And listen, see when you look at the like uh, Albion Rovers and that, compared to the Darville setup, the K Park up at East Kilbride and that, the setups at the grounds in the, the west of Scotland are, are fuck, they're fucking 10 times better than what they are doing there. A hundred percent. And what they bring is they bring a a youth development and they bring a pathway where Aye. they've actually got boys club or academy teams all the way from fun falls right up to 18s, 20s. So they're developing players and they're actually going to give young players uh, their opportunity. Whereas maybe your Albion Rovers, maybe your teams like that, they've got nothing below them. They've got no, no. players to feed in. So... I, as I said, you've got all ambitious clubs and I just I, I can see big changes in the next three or four years. Aye, hopefully, mate. It definitely needs a shake-up, I think. The, the SFA are just scared of the change, I think, aren't they? Because there's, that, a there's that of, many clubs. Yeah, a, lot of them, a lot of the lower league chairmen are on the board. So, look, for talking sake, when we were at East Kilbride we, in the playoff, we had to go to Bucky. Then we played them home and away. The winner then plays the bottom of the League Two. And when you play the bottom of League Two, the first game's at your home park. So you've played a double header. The first game's at your home park. And the second game's always drawn. And the draw's made before it is at the away ground. So before you uh, you get four games to get up. It's no easy. Uh, it's no easy. Know. You know, it's not a one off game. Aye, uh, aye. Uh, it should be a kind of mere, kind of mere maybe modelled on, on down south. I think, I think that the National League doing there's three up in it. Wrexham ah, 100%. And the, the top three came up, the bottom three go down. And listen, Darvel, as you say, Darvel and that are well backed. So, uh, as I said before, the Rows and, and Cove Rangers and, and that are showing that they can move up up the ladder and get a right good account of so, I mean, Co Cove, are, Cove are not far away from the Premiership, which is absolutely outstanding in the last five, six years. I think Paul Hartley done quite how a good job there. So, as, Paul, as Paul was a good pal of mine, aye? so he, he went to Hartlepool, he just took back over, so I would good. expect them to improve, they've had a couple of bad results of late, so Cove will pick up again, I'm sure. Aye, aye, good stuff, mate, aye, it's good to get a wee insight, a wee insight to that kind of side of the football. Aye. What, what, about your, what about yourself and who in the football, mate, other, other than the gym, i just seen Jim's gym coming on there asking how your legs were. I seen I seen your post on Facebook the other night. You looked as if you were struggling at that fucking circuit training. It looked horrendous, oh, mate. I'm no joking. It's <laughs> a up there, right? Anyway, I don't know about his class on Friday. I'm agony. 
Absolutely Aye. agony. Ah, well, mate, they'll, they'll say in it, no pain, no gain in it. That's it. What, what's happening with yourself and the, the fitness side of stuff now, mate? You still in a wee sabbatical or are you getting back into the game? I, I was just, mate, it was just um, after Peter's Hill last year, we won the league and we go to the end of the season. Uh, we were all prepared for this season in terms of doing our business early, having five pre contract signings uh, all ready to go. And just when I, I sat down and kind of spoke to the board and spoke to the, the money man, it just didn't meet my ambition. Uh, kind of being a yo-yo club, getting up and down and, and no one to put, push the boat out or be ambitious to kick on. It, it just didn't... I, I'm in football to be successful. I do it and it's a 24 hour a day, seven day a week job. I've got a family, so you do your own job, then you actually do that job. So you're all the time. The phone goes, you're a counsellor, you're talking to players, you're out watching games. So for me, when I go up to the next league, I want to win it. I don't want to just participate in it. I don't want to go up where the club actually know that ambitious. They don't care if they get back down and they don't feel as if they belong at that level. For me, we were all in and we got them up. And once you get up, you've then got a new target. It's the top of that league. Um, and it was just one of them. I just couldn't see myself just being a manager it's, being a manager is difficult, right? I don't love being a manager that much that I just do it for the love of it. I'm doing it to be successful. I'm either one of these guys, I'm all in or I'm all out. So oh, aye. I, aye, I'm all out. I'm no, I'm no hanging about just to participate. Aye, it's just saying, mate, I, 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 I train with the boys club as well. I'm Tuesday, Thursday with the boys club with my Wayne and then my other wee boys Monday, Wednesday. And then I work the weekends in the railway. I, I'm the same. I don't know what it's like at your kind of level, but I would have that attitude as well, mate. I know folk are in it for the love of the game. I mean, I'm, I'm 41 this year and I'm going back to play over 40s on ah. Sunday. Just kind of keep away, mate. I just ah. love it too much. I miss ah. it too much. But I'm, I'm, I'm going back on Sunday and on. I want to get back and try and win things, you know what I mean? I, 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 I ran a... It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, honestly. Your phone goes 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Wains are in bed. You're standing out the street. You're trying Aye. to sign players. You're arguing out a five or a week. You know, so you want. I want to do it right, but I want to be as professional uh, as I possibly can. I want to drive uh, teams to titles and be successful, uh, which I've been fortunate enough to do that I've done with the three clubs that I've been at. But once you feel as if you've no got the backing or it's no possible or... You, you've not no got a team that's ambitious enough to kick on and then it's not really for me and obviously we're on your show I, I love watching Selic I love going to Celtic games I love taking my family and my kids to the games so you get that up and all don't you? I, you get that up and you miss the games and different things your season tickets getting gave away every week so <laughs> if it's not for you don't do it that's what I say aye definitely mate before we go to the Celtic mate we'll touch a wee bit on on your career, um, you can write through the, the youth ranks at Thistle before you actually started playing pro with them. Or no, who, who, who no. was your boy, who was your boys' clubs in that before no, you started? I, I was at. Um, I started off with Aston Villa out in Uddingston at that time. I I used to play against them. I and then at, with Jim Sweet out there, uh, Big Stephen McManus played there as well. Um, and then I went to Celtic North. Which was a up in Springburn, which was a successful team. Big Brian right. McCollagan was there, uh, Craig Neeson, Tam McManus, Peter Canero. So we, we had a right good team. Um, Dan Goldie, who went to uh, Hart. So we were a really successful mm -hmm. team. Um, just done, done well there, played there for a few years, and then went to Hillwood, who had a great team. We, Brian Smith, Peter McDonald was there. John McGovern, Paul McNeil, they were a right good few players there. Um, and they all kind of made it as well. So Aye. kind of there's a lot of players that did kick on um through boys clubs. And and then at Ferreira went to Celtic Boys Club when the call came. Celtic Boys Club didn't really start until twelve, I think, at that time. Um then I went to Celtic Aye. Boys Club uh, and then played for there all the way through. So um I had the opportunity, Tommy Burns spoke to me, he, he signed for Celtic, but it's one I knocked back. I didn't, I, 
and a, a lot of carry on goes on about the Celtic Boys Club, so I'll just put it clear that when I was 14, you used to have to get a letter to go and train with Celtic, say like right. the holidays and all that. So mm-hmm. uh, people say Celtic Boys Club and Celtic were the same, they weren't the same because I played with a Boys Club and some of the boys didn't get invited to train with right. Celtic. So you had to go down to like Barrafield or Helen Vale or Glasgow Green or Crown Point. Um, so you had to get invited to it. And there were one time, I'll just forward on to, I was going down, I remember buying my season ticket, uh, £77. I used to save up my paper money. And I went <laughs> down and, and Tommy Burns actually came out the main door. And the boys right. were training up at Helen Vale. We came out with Starkey. And uh, I was standing, they went like, you can up your training. And I went like, no, I'm just doing it in my scene tight. He knew my mum for the Calton, because they were brought up in the Calton. And he went like, did you get a letter to go to the training and all that? He, I says, aye, 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 I got a letter. He says, you know, get up and all be up this morning. I went like, no, I was the up at all, I didn't go. He says, what do you mean you didn't go? I went, I'm going to have my way training with hips. And he went like, all right. and Tommy Burns went like, I th- thought you were a Celtic fan. I went, no, I'm a Celtic fan. I said, but the Hibs training is far better than the Celtic training, so I'd prefer to go to Hibs. And he's like, ah, and then he was raging. Aye, yeah, and they were, one of the, they were one of the scouts there. And Tommy went like to him, I'll get a wee chat with you when I get back. You know what I mean? So he was really too happy. And that was him no longer in the door for Kilmarnock at that time. Oh, aye, aye. I may say I talk about the Pierce Hill. I, 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 I played in the two Scottish Cup finals two years in a row there. We, I don't know if you remember the club but from Otherworld, Netherdale Community. Aye, aye. Um, we, we, we good played that. Is, is that aye, we, for? Aye, mate, aye, that was my boys' club right, right. through. And then, then I ran the Bullfrog Bar for 15 years. We, right. we won the lot as well. But aye, we played up there against <coughs> Partick Thistle, believe it or not, in 1997, under 15s. They beat us 3-1. What a side they were. And then we beat Queen's Park in 1998 and won the Scottish. Oh. And the two games were up at the old, the old Peter South Park and the Flats. Oh, was it the old one, the Grass Park? Aye. Aye, 97 and 98, mate. Aye, 97 and 98, aye. Played I up there two years. I think they played there, if I'm they right. Did. They, they did. did mate. I think they played them up there for about six or seven years. That's right. Um, That's right. Before they started moving them on to Hamden and that. But I just, I just popped into my head there. Aye, bro. Aye, so, yeah, but obviously, for kind of 97 right up to... Run about what two two thousand and six Partick ah. Thistle, St Johnston, Stenny. We still we stint on Ireland as well. So was it was it well or well or a hunter top flight professional appearances you made then for, aye, for start aye. the finish? Aye. It was um I just as I was saying Tommy Bond, so he, he came back again because um my brother Jim was at Kilmarnock and um and he had came and he tried to sign Jim for Celtic from Kilmarnock, but he was there. And he offered me a YTS deal at Celtic, but I was training at Thistle at that time. And right. Graham Diamond was there. And it was just one of the... The training was brilliant. I liked it at Thistle. And Murdo McLeod was the manager. And they were really interested in me, really. And with the opportunity that I was going to get a chance in the first team early. And I'd seen a right. lot of players going to Celtic, no, you're different Rangers and different teams. And just kind of fall away. There's too many players. And... Um, I got the offer at Thistle and I, and I took it. And say to be fair, it was a great move, a great club. I loved my time there and I did get my opportunity at the age of 16, playing in the first team. That's it. That's, you, you see me have carried that kind of strong mind, mind through if being a young boy then. And I know that even then, your, your boyhood team, but you wanted to go and play, like you're going to get an opportunity. Aye. So you see, your, your mindset seems to have been the, kind of the same for being a young boy, even, even to know, you know what I mean? Aye, absolutely, uh, absolutely. And, and I made my debut uh, at the age of 16. I came on against Morton, we were 3-1 down. Uh, I've done very well. I, I came on and I set up a couple of goals, but finished three each. And I was playing against uh, Owen Archdeacon, the old Celtic. Oh, so, aye. aye, so Starkey was the manager at Morton and Owen Archdeacon. Um, and he ended up three each, and it was a laugh after the game. I went down, and I was a, like a YTS, so we Brenda used to run the washing room, and uh, I came off after the game, and uh, that was fine. All the boys flung all their strips in the middle, and I lifted the strips, and uh, 
when a wee doon carried them all down to the washroom and put them in. And John McVay went, ah, wee man, listen, see this Saturday, if you're involved in the first team, you don't do any of the jobs. <laughs> so it was quite funny, quite funny, eh? Did you get a chance then through the, through the career eh, to play at Paradise then? Ah, yeah, well, I was at Thistle and eh, played a few games there. Eh, Middlesbrough came in, sorry, Aston Villa offered me and Jamie McKenzie. He could do it in trial, but Thistle were going through eh, financial problems at that time. Um, and we didn't go and then uh, go to the end of the season I think Murdo Murdo got sacked and then he ended up going as assistant to Wim Janssen oh right aye 97, 98 aye aye so Murdo went there and John McVeigh came in we were going through a financial hardship that was saved the Jags and all that kind of thing I remember but, that aye I but remember it worked that. brilliant for me and all the young boys because we couldn't afford a big squad you know, Aye. Um, so you're getting loads of game time then. We're, we're getting opportunities that maybe you wouldn't have got had you been at a bigger club, you know. So mm-hmm. um, it worked out in our favour. Um, I've done well. Middles were coming to buy me. Uh, Brian Robson tried to buy me for a quarter of a million at that time. And then I ruptured my ankle ligaments uh, again oh. Clyde at Broadwood. I was playing with Scotland. Uh, come back in the morning of the game, played against Clyde ruptured my ankle ligaments. Um, that was me out for maybe six months or so. It's a game changer, and isn't it? Game it's changer. Game just changer just it. I was flying down to the riverside uh, the next day. Uh, Gordon McQueen was up from Middlesbrough. They'd agreed a quarter of a million fee. Tommy Bryce says, how are you feeling? I says, I'm tired for the Scotland trip. Uh, tri- I was away in Slovenia. I come back, I said, I'm fit, but I was just tired. They went, right, that's fine play 60 minutes, hopefully we do well and I'll take you off. Uh, and I was flying down the next day to have talks with him with regards to a five-year deal and a ruptured my ankle ligament. So that kind of done it to the end of the season. But I came back, played well, scored a couple of goals. Then uh, Middlesbrough wanted me back doing in trial just to basically see my ankle. But I had a few upper, uh, like St Johnson come in from me where I ended up going. Air United, I think DL was there at the time. Davey Hay, my agent, uh, had good contacts with Dominic Keenan at Livingston who were paying oh, big, big money at that time so I had the chance to go there but I chose St Johnson but it was probably the biggest mistake in my life to be honest I know mate but you, it, the, the way your your mind does it seems to be you don't really look back with regrets there's, there's no there'll not be many folk in your position that have you can all come on and talk about fit and dream about it but that's that you've you've played at the highest level and played against top top players. So, uh, it's it's hard it's hard not to look back. I suppose and think what might have been. I suppose, eh? I but, I saw. But I went, it was a funny one. I went to St Johnson and it was maybe I think it was the third or fourth game of the season. We were playing Celtic at Park Heath and I was on the bench and uh, I got a pair of night boots, the black with a bit of blue on them. Right, <laughs> I, got, I get slaughtered for it right after the boys, but. Uh, went out and that was fine and uh, I still had my season ticket for Park you'd see the guys beside right. me no HH seat 39 they were, all, they were all laughing and all that you'll no need your season ticket next week and all that right so uh, I was warming up with big Dan Dodds and Danny Griffin it was a laugh right so I'm doing it to sell it in the game zone Berkovich uh, John Barnes was the manager Berkovich oh, Larson Viduka sell it to some team um, at that time because mind he played the like, was it the uh, that's when Larson was injured, wasn't it? Was it the two at the back and the full backs or something? Mind the full backs and the full shift. Was it two, two, two or something? Uh, remember that with Berkovich and Maravchi in the hole. Remember uh, the full back hit today? I can't mind uh, the formation, but uh, I was starting. So the games at the other end were out. And uh, honestly, see when you're at Park Kid and that stadium is just above you. Oof, it's brilliant. And uh, so, no, sorry. So at the start of the game, the Celtic songs on at the start of the game, and I'm sitting beside Nathan Lowndes, right? The Celtic right. song, I'm the glass go. And I, I'm sitting, right? I didn't realise I was doing it. I was tapping my foot, and Nathan Lowndes, right? <laughs> and just like, uh-huh. me. And I'm like, it's just one of these things. And uh, uh-huh. going forward for that, I've been root warming up. So Danny Griffin and Big Dodgy and that. So we're just on his stretch and stretching your groin, right? And when the ball's at the other end, it is kind of quiet at that end. And, uh, Guy shouted, Lachlan, I know you. You're a dirty on the B, right? So I'm stretching, right? 
and I, I was like, I'll not say anything, but I couldn't have held my tongue. And I went like, turn around, I went like, what are you talking about? And he went like, and all the fans kind of started laughing. I went like, you're sitting in the non-season ticket, but what are you talking about? I go to more games in the season than you do. I'm a <laughs> ticket up there. And uh, everybody kind of started laughing. Now, uh, did you buy the season tickets for the Rangers? Uh, sorry, buy the game tickets for the Rangers, Rangers end. Uh, 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 so he didn't think I knew that, know what I mean? And I just said it, it was a laugh. <laughs> everybody started laughing after that. There's some amount, that just think about that, obviously 97, 98 was the year we stopped at 10. And then that John Barnes here and all, and I think um, the Dutchman, your man was in, uh, who was that I was in charge of Rangers at the time? Uh, Advocate. 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 I can't even remember actually. But through that kind of era with the Celtic players you've just mentioned, and then obviously some of the players you've played against and played with, who 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 was the best player you played with and against through through your career? Oh, uh... You, you can always you can always say like Henrik, right? But I was never I, I was never a defender or anything, so I, I never seen Paul Hartley and uh, John Paul McBride who would say like JP was out and John and oh, I've been I've been out a few nights out with JP years ago. JP is outstanding. Uh, JP what a player. Uh, JP was unbelievable, man. J I seen him last uh, week actually at the game. Uh, and uh, one, of, one, of my, one of the boys I work with, uh, Manny, Paul McMonigal for Hamilton, him and, him and JP used to be right good pals, I'm not sure if they still see each other or not, but uh, I, Paul's for me Lernock, aye, and I aye. Had, used to, had a couple of nights out with JP, I'm going back maybe 10-15 years ago, but it was aye. never a... It was never oh, a, a Friday night of all the game, aye. Well, I'll tell you what, Lockie, it was never a fucking early one, I'll tell you that. Aye, a hundred percent. Paul Hartley was Paul Hartley was a kind of a late developer. Uh, Zico aye. was I, I went to school, well, he was in Jim's class at school at Holy Cross. So right. uh, Zico was a he was a late developer, but he came to St Johnson. It, it, it was a laugh. We were at St Johnson, Sandy Clark was a manager. I didn't play. Jai P didn't play. Paul Hartley didn't play. Paddy Conley didn't play, and Stuart McCluskey didn't play. And some people say it's in a heat zone, you know what I mean? I, I, I remember when you were all there. Was that, did, did Hartley, did he go to Millwall for there? No, was he go went for Hamilton, a Millwall, a oh, Ray, so it was. to Hibs, to St. Johnson. Aye, but he didn't right. play, and then Billy Stark came in and started playing Zico. He was a white player, started playing Zico centre mid, and then, oh, he was flying, and then he got moved to Hearts for there. I listen, we we probably get two of the best seasons of his career at him at Parky. It was outstanding Aye. at us. What Aye. a fuck. He, he, he ended up playing defensive, mind he sat in front of the back four. Whereas Aye. at Hart he was a box to box midfielder. Aye. What a player. Aye, for that mate, then he obviously did a couple of wee spells, lower legs, than Barton, Stenny and that. And then a wee a wee John Earl of Water, Erty Finn Harps, how did that come about? At Finn Harp. So I went from St John's and then John McVeigh took her. By the way, I was at St John's for four years. It was an absolute, I actually hated driving that road for four years, honestly. It was a nightmare time. It was a, <laughs> honestly, see, I look back now and I just wish I could go back that time and choose somewhere else to go. Absolute Aye. nightmare for me. And then once I, I had went and loaned to Dumbarton, did we win the league at Dumbarton? I, I, I was in loan there and then four weeks before then they seen my loan come back. So I can't mind if we would just get promoted or win the league. I was on the party then, but I can't mind. If we won I know the a boy. I know a boy that plays there. The nurse, Stevie, Stevie Carswell, that played used to play with Motherwell. Aye, aye. He, I, he, I, he, I, works, he tap your league, Dumbarton, then. Aye, aye. Stevie works on the railway with me at the, the weekends and that and all. So good football, good football player, the laddie. Doing well. I think, I think, he, I think he's moved from centre mid into centre back, Stevie. But aye, he's a good, a good boy, man. Aye, um, aye, aye Dumbarton then. Up to Steny, Play, played a couple of finals and semis up there since it's been changed into the 4G. Yeah. I, I, I always loved playing up at Oakleview. I thought it was a great wee grunt to play for. great wee park. Good people up there as well. Good people. Really nice, mate. Wee pub, wee, wee, pub in the, wee pub in the corner of the stone and all. Aye, aye, aye. The, uh, what's it called? The Warriors or something? Something like that, aye, aye. Aye. A few shanties in there, aye. Uh, what was I going to say? So, Steny, and then at the end of the season... 
Um, an agent came to me and says that uh, Finn Harps wanted me to go up in uh, League Island. I went, oh, I've seen the place and all that. Really liked it. Played in mm-hmm. a game. Spoke to Felix Healy. Uh, and we've done the deal, you know. So, um, played out there. Brilliant summer league. Uh, loved my time out there. I was actually in for the manager's job there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and when I was disappointed not to get it. It was a kind of job that I wanted. And I seen the ambition at that club. And it needed a wee bit of transformed and a bit of youth right. development in it. So, that was a job that I really, really, I did want. Um, it didn't happen for whatever reason. But, um, but no, I can McCoy played there at that time. Aye. I think the second theory Island and Ouse, is it Larner getting the they threw a bit of money at they were talking about Griffiths not going earlier in the first division, but that's right, isn't it? Aye, but that's uh, that's Belfast, so that's there's the north and south. Oh, is that the Northern Irish League I'm thinking aye, about? Aye. Ah, so, right, right. So if you look at you remember well, when I was there, Larner was there, Kevin Brown who went to Wolves was there, oh, Stephen aye. Ward, McCoy. Redding and that he played with, didn't he? Aye. Wes Houlihan uh, was there. There's a boy, George O'Callaghan, who I think went to Peterborough. Uh, Curtis Fleming. So they were, they were good. And what happens over there, see, like within the summer league, all the scouts for Scotland and England go out. Because in the summer, right. your football's done. Over there, it keeps going. So what you'll find now is you'll start seeing a lot of Irish going to England now. The scouts go over and watch them over maybe five, six, seven week period. Uh, Aye. And that's how they all move. Aye. Ah, that's good, mate. Uh, dropped into the, the the junior league after that. Well, have we a we stint with Elgin? A we stint with Elgin and all when you come here? Oh, I come back here, yeah, played with Elgin, and uh, I, I pulled my thigh twice, and then that was kind of... Uh, it was done to the juniors for me after that. Aye, Bells Hill, Peter Hill. Now, the missus, the missus um, cousin played uh, Brian Dingle. Used to play I with Bells Hill on that. Uh, he was at he was at Bells Hill then went to Pollock, big goals. Aye, aye, that's 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 the missus cousin. Aye, he was he was in fireman, man. He used to bang them in big number nine, wasn't he? Did he support the right team, but Dale, as you know? Yes, mate, I know. Aye, she was the same, but managed to fucking change the alliances. That, know what I mean? She knows what I've been for. They're always welcome. <laughs> know what I mean? That's that, mate. Managerial career, mate, kicks off around about, what, 2014, Ross yep. Vale and wishing that as assistant before you went into kind of full-time management and out on your own to, obviously, you touched on EK and Peter's Hill and that. Aye, aye, aye. So I always kind of, I've always felt as if I could add some being a manager, mm. you know, so it's always a route that I wanted to go. Um, I was at Wish All Helping Big John. My, my wife was uh, training to be a nurse at the time. So I didn't have the time, and as I said to you earlier, you're all in or all out. So I didn't, right. want, I didn't want to um, have to do it. So basically, with Big John, I just went along a Saturday, helped him out. Um, and then the time came, uh, I had spoke to my assistant, so I was ready for for a long time. Kate qualified, and then the job at Rossville came up in the second division. Uh, the team was basically both of the juniors, doing beside new means. Um, and we went that's in what there. I, that's what I'm That's what I stay. I, I went, the in there, went in there, bought me the leak. Um, we took her when they were bottom. It just it, we get rid of all the players, we get rid of 18 players the first night. Uh, brought in 25 new players, uh, and won the leak in the first year. Took the game up, and then uh, started the season well the next season. And then the call came, uh, for East Bright to take her there. Um, and that was just. That was just before I actually went uh, to watch the Celtic game again, East Coast Bride. I, I took over two games after that. Because uh, that was only two and a half. We struggled. Was that up at Airdrie or Broadwood? That's Airdrie, right. That's Aye. right. Aye. They done well. Done extremely well that night. Um, but Celtic, I think, were very flat and one paced. Um, I don't know what's happening here. Um, it does make him up on the screen anyway. Does it not? Uh, nah. I still keep up very one pace that night, I would say. Um, and East Kilbride done well. And I think it was a 2-0. The, the big Dutch guy scored, didn't he? Deflected it in or something. Aye, aye, he did. So that's yeah. you. If you got your, 
your heart set on them getting back in or the old the, the old toes itching man to get back and get tore into it. He, 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 if something comes up the now can I get him towards the end of the season if it's the right thing for you would you, would you go for if it it's the right thing, yes 100% if it's the right thing then I'd be interested I, see to be honest I'm no one of these guys that goes about applying for all the jobs I don't do that if somebody wants you they'll come and uh, offer you the job and you can sit down and have a chat I don't apply for jobs. I'm out every night of the week. I've got a black book, so I still go to every game. I'm still ready to go. Uh, my management team are now at another club by now. Um, so they're doing well as well. Um, so once the right opportunity comes, then I'll get back into it. But as I say, I'm enjoying going to the games and that, and so it's, it's no problem. Aye, good, mate. Good, mate. I hope something comes up, man. Good luck with that. Right, mate, we'll get tore into the old Selic for a wee half hour before we get the the best of living, mate. So obviously, everybody talks about when, when did you start supporting Selic and all that, and you start supporting Selic when you come out the womb, as far as I'm concerned. But just thinking back, mate, right back to the start, how did how did the Selic thing come about? Was it a full full family thing? Then can you remember going to your your first game and stuff? I, like that? I, I can I can remember it. I so no, it was me. My dad was believe it or not, my dad was a uh, uh, Ranger season ticket holder. All right, so, right. Uh, so my dad went to all the games. My mum was brought up in the the Calton. My dad came for Toll Cross. So um, no, my dad was Rangers. He he went to all the games. Uh, no, no, uh, the away games. He just went to the home games. Um, right. And my mum was brought up in the Calton. We have brothers uh, and sister Eileen, Joe, Michael, Wally, uh, and Jim. They they were brought up right beside St Mary's. Uh, all of played with uh, John, what's his name, John, John Rice at St Mary's and Tam Bums was there. So they, they grew up knowing all them um, all the way through. So my mum was a big, my mum was a big Celtic fan. She was at, was at the second European Cup final, who was it again? Fianna, 19, 1970, 1970. Yeah, my mum was at that game. So no, my dad was a Rangers fan I was, when I was born. And different things, and then I started obviously walking. Uh, my dad would go to Rangers all the time, and my mum left the open. It was my my chance, and my dad asked Fair me enough. a few times at a very young age if I wanted to go to the game, and I always said no. I never, I never ever went. <laughs> my uncle was disabled, and he used to sit in the main stand and park in the school at Salem Park. Aye, he Aye. was never out of our house. I was always in my granny's, and he says, "You want to come to the Celtic game?" And uh, my mum's like, ah, do whatever you want. And uh, I went to Park Kid and that's been me ever since, you know. So, uh, good but what choice, I would say good is, choice, mate. Good choice. <laughs> I, and even, see, the only, what I would say with my dad was, my dad took us to Selic Park as well. My dad dropped his ass, picked us up, took us to Selic Boys Club and backed us. So it was never a problem, you know what I mean? It was never, and it wasn't actually too much of a wind up, mate. He didn't even wind us up or anything, you know what I mean? He, he went to the games. And he took us to Selic. He was pally with yeah. you, Tom, Tommy Burns and that as well, and spoke away. So it, it was never ever a problem, to be honest. I, I, I think it's worse now than it was back then. I, I think it's probably a lot more under the microscope because of this this social media shite and whether whether you choose to get involved with it or not. You know what I mean? I I, sometimes sit- you can see the off the cuff comments. Everybody's got an opinion and everything. Sometimes just be positive, you know what I mean? If it doesn't need to be negative. If, if a manager right. leaves a job, it might be that it's just no work to it. He doesn't need to be the worst manager on the planet, <laughs> you know what I mean? And Aye, mate, but listen, if folk, if folk are the greeting and being on social media, getting folk at tight and being arseholes, they've got nothing else to do with their time, you know what I mean? So 100%. that's just the way people are. So can you remember going to Park Keith for the first time and who your, who your early heroes were in the hoops? I well, I, what I remember is like during the the holidays, the summer holidays, and this is for a very young age. I can remember my BMX Buster uh, cycling down. Uh, <laughs> my mum used to take like me, Jim, and Gerald, and my cousin Stephen and Brian. We used to cycle down to Barrafield at that time, and you used right. to, we used to go in and watch training during right. the summer holidays. You could just stand in the ash park and watch the players training all the time. And then we would go down to Selic Park, stand outside it, 
and then we would go to Strathline Park because he used to do a pre season out there. I was just going to say that, mate. You took the word out of my mouth because I'm, I'm from Marvel originally, so we, we used to go down there and watch him at Strathy and all when we were younger. So they used to do it just as you came in at the roundabout before the MDs to the right, and then, the one, to, then they used to go a big run all the way around the park and all that. So, and then we used to follow them before they played. Normally it was Rangers or Cup finals or that. We used to follow the bus down to Seamill and all that. So, Aye. And, I remember all that, so that was for a very young age, and we used to go in, and the, the front of the, the stadium was always different, we used to go in and write them letters saying we wanted to sign for Celtic, and uh, get the wee woman, and all that kind of thing. Also, I remember the gates being open, uh, and me and my cousin Stephen went down with my, my auntie Betty, and uh, the park was getting cut, and we're looking all that park, and all that, the holy ground, and, uh, and the grass was put to the side, and we had two clear bags to get the grass, and we put it up in the wall in the house. <laughs> and it ended up black and stinking in the room and all that, but that was the level we went, and that's all we spoke about with Selick, honestly. Aye, that's what you're like, when you're a youngster. As, as soon as they capture you, and you start to get a wee bit of knowledge about football, and start to know the players and understand the game, yeah, that's you, mate. You're, you're hooked for a light. It's it's a drug, isn't it? Say like that's a drug. a drug. And what, what I would say, I know, is I love Say like, man. I, I talk about Say like every day. If Say like are winning, if Say like are winning, everything else just, um, everything else is fine, isn't it? Everything else is brilliant. Everything else is great. I um, mean, it has. Because if, I mean, if I, if I watch a game on a Saturday and I'm going at night shift and we get beat, you're, you're scunnered all night and pissed off on Sunday. Aye, mate, it does. It, it does, really big time, you. man. And my, yeah. my, 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 my missy's been for a family that kicks with our fit. And my two boys been Celtic fans. We'll sit here and watch the the derby if it's away. And then after the game, she'll come down and go, ah, what, what the fuck's wrong with you, man? And my wee boy's nearly 12 and me and him are screaming the house down and shouting their obscenities for 90 minutes. Aye. They're well warned to take any of that nonsense outside the house because I don't want them involved in it, but she still doesn't understand that even in my 40s, she's like, how, how can you get so wound up about fat bum like that? If you don't understand it now, you'll never understand it. You know what I mean? It's, it is, that's just what it is. But Family, so, faith, football, is it? That's, that's the way I've okay. kind of always had it. Family, go to chapel <laughs> every week. Uh, and, and I've done my own football, but see, within my own football, I've always went to watch Selic, like, uh, and then I go to Santa Pons every year. So it's, it's like a drug to me, you know what I mean? Sell it. Having right. that day has always got something to do with Celtic in it, you know. And even when we were at St Johnson, I remember me, JP, Stuart McCluskey, Paddy Conley, and Paul Hartley. Le we left St Johnson training right and drove straight <laughs> to Blackburn for that. Mind yeah. we go to the UEFA Cup final. Straight oh, to, I... straight to yeah. Blackburn uh, for the game. And then straight up that night in training the next day. And then again, straight <laughs> to Liverpool. And then straight back. So honestly, um, even though I was involved, Celtic was always in me, you know. Aye, definitely. Going going back to the earlier days, then, and then we'll we'll move on and talk about your favourite derbies and away trips and stuff. Who can who, can you pick out one one player when you were when you were younger that was your your hero? Uh, Paul McStay, um but Aye, Tommy Bumsby and through the Carlton thing, obviously my mum and that that are that I've told you about my uncles. Uh, Tommy Burns used to get us tickets for all the games. And I remember getting in, they took me in the trophy room, they're sitting on his knee and uh, looking at the trophies. And it was just like a normal guy, you know what I mean? And, uh, and he loved with the Celtic fans. And I, I bet I'm talking like this, but everybody's the same. He had stories like that with everybody. Um, you thought you were the only one. And it was ironic that uh, he signed Jim for Kilmarnock and... Uh, it was Jim Lachlan, my mum's name. That was that, 95, 96, Jim was there? Aye, I think it was. About that, wasn't it? A four, a four, burn, a four burns came back to Parkhead, wasn't it? Aye, and, uh, and to so Tommy was always kind of, because he was for the Carlton, my man, that always spoke to him and my uncle. So getting down there, it was, it was like nothing. He would just walk you into the trophy room, sit down, have a chat with my uncle Jim. Keys a couple of tickets for St Murn away and then we were away, you know what I mean? So Aye. Paul McStay is a player, I think, was the best sale at centre mid I'll ever see. Um, but Tommy Burns, I loved watching him and he was a, a great friend of the family. And when you talk about Celtic, I think you always talk about Tommy Burns. 
Aye, definitely. I mean, I think he's, I think he's one of the players, maybe including Henke in there, that you can speak in the same breath as the Lions. And there's no many of them. There's Aye. no many of them. I th- I think, and people disagree with it. Scott Scott Brown will be in, in yeah. that kind of conversation. Maybe a, maybe 10, 20 years down the line when you look back at what he won and kind of what he went through at Selic Park as well, you know what I mean? But there's no many people you speak about when I mean, you speak about the Lions in the same breath, but Tommy Burns is certainly one of them without a shadow of a doubt. I, and I think a testament to him when, when Jim was at Comandock and uh, the call came. Uh, it was a funny one. It was... Tommy Burns was a manager at the time and that was fine and uh, he had been room just while he was a manager and they'll just fall on to one another wee bit but he was a manager and Jim says it was funny after training the day he came into the young boys he was always one for trying to promote young players to the squad because I think him, mm. Nicholas all that get put in the Celtic team early and he was always right. an advocate at getting young players into the team early and he always told them if you're good enough you're old enough and put the Put the young player, uh, put the old players out the team. You get in there. So he, he was one for that, and he had said to Jim, "Was just telling us one day had we run the boys, Mark Roberts, Jacko, right? What's your ideal? So they're only sixteen at the time in YTS. What do you want to do in your career and all that? So one of the boys says, uh, "He says no. After command, what would you like to do? What's the highlight of your career?" And they went like, ah, "I want to play for Liverpool, right? What do you want to do? I want to play for Liverpool in Scotland. Who do you want to?" Oh, I'd love to play with AC Milan and he came round to Jim and he says, What do you want to do in your career? And he went, Ah, play for Selic. And he went, Ah, and the boys are like, Ah, but you've got to want to do more than that and play with Scotland and this. And Jim went, Ah, no, no, no. I want to play for Selic. And Tam Burns started laughing. Uh, and that was fine. And then uh, the call came for Fergus McCann. And this is a testament, and people probably won't know this. When he was at Kilmarnock, he got a wee bit of stick for leaving. But at that time at Kilmarnock, you used to have a door man. When you walked down, the guy would open the door, and that was his job all day. Uh, all right. For the players, right? He would do that. And uh, so Jim was out, and they had to YTS job, sweep the car park, and him and Alan Jack, wee Jacko. Wee Jacko was a Rangers fan for Denison. Um, and he'll probably be watching this wee Jacko. But Tommy Burns came out, and uh, he walked out of the car park, and Jim's looked round. And he says that the wee guy at the door's crying at the door. <laughs> the right. office staff are at the Windies and a couple of the players are stoning and wailing up. And uh, Tam Burns came out of the, and he went like, Jim, all the best and all that. I, I'm, I'm leaving. I've, I've resigned. I'm taking out at Celtic and all that. And uh, all the best, Jack, over your career and all that. And the two of them are stoning greeting in the car park, right? And uh, <laughs> he, he was driving away and Jim stopped him. And he went, like, ah, good luck, big man, and all that. And Jim went, like, make Selic like, great again, Tam. And uh, he started laughing and went away. But it just shows the, the effect they had on people. You know what I mean? Definitely. The when he was leaving, everybody's crying, you know? Aye, aye, definitely. I've, not, listen, I've never heard a bad story, and I don't think I ever will. And that's for both Celtic and Rangers fans, you know what I mean? It's unbelievable. Yeah. Just say, a massive testament to, aye, a brilliant football player at the time and a brilliant servant at Park Heath, but as people always say, mate, first and foremost, a brilliant human being, wasn't he? I just so, wish he'd have, uh, he was brilliant. I love watching Tommy Burns' team, and all. Uh, he'd have been uh, a bit oh, mate, time. Uh, but we've well, just well, done lucky, the free phone football, the players he signed. <coughs> oh, uh, I just, he was unlucky, man. He was, honestly, he was nearly there. He was nearly there. He was. And he never had Every year. Every year, mate. The draws, the draws kilt us, man. The draws uh, kilt us. And I think everybody wanted him to do it, you know. Um, it's just that oh, I, it was tough. I, I still, I still think it's probably the the best football team I've ever seen to, to this day. I mean, Ro- Rogers' his first season was really good. Brilliant, brilliant. Balls, Ange Balls gathering pace, and it's good. But going to Martin Martin O'Neill, O'Neill's, Martin O'Neill's first aye, Martin O'Neill, of course, I Martin O'Neill's my kind of favourite team. But talk, talking about. Been a 15, 16 year old, going to watch George Cadetti, Pierre, Paolo Di Canio, in full flight. Andy Tom, man, it was, it was unbelievable. Well, and, I don't aye. Know, two goals his first game against Thistle and all, you know. T- That's Tampa. right, remember that. And remember, uh, at that time, Rangers were cheating, spending all that money. We never had that. We never had the yep. funds that they had. They were spending money they never had, but that came back to bite them in the end, as we know. Aye, aye, a certain extent, but. No, no, no folly, no folly. But, uh, 
Hey, a wee, a wee bit on the Rangers games. Um, the old Rangers, the new Rangers, whatever ones you want to pick, mate. And uh, if you can pick, this is a hard one, I know. It's your, your favourite away day at the old yeah. shit pit and your favourite night at Paradise against the against the Rangers. But by the way, right, and uh, I think uh, the, the boy who was on last week was talking about it. There, there, there's loads, right, that I can think about. But last year, that 3 0 game, just was it just after Christmas? Right, uh, 3 0 and a half time. 3 0 off. The atmosphere that night was unbelievable. I think I was the first one in the stadium. I was there early. I left work right down in the stadium. I, I, I said to one of the boys who works at Rangers, man, I went, that's the best atmosphere I've ever been at. And I said, mm-hmm. Rangers came. And you see that, but and you think, and then the next one gets better and better. But what a noise. And, and, and I looked for a management point of view as well. And I came into the game and I watched the warm ups and different things. And I'm no doubt yeah. about the games. I'm driving. So I went down and I looked at the Rangers warm up, right? They lost the game in the warm up. Uh, the fitness coach, Flanny, who was at Thistle with me, done it in the corner at the Green Brigade rather than do it over at the main stand. Yeah, they, or forever. Aye, aye. They were doing the warm up there. They lost the game in the warm up. Aye, um, aye, all that... one. Oh, first 45 minutes. Oh, it was unbelievable. The tempo you're, you're... was frightening, wasn't it? I need, I need to stop asking that question because Paul John was talking about it last week and I missed it through COVID. One, one of my pals for the Calton actually, it was, it was him that had my ticket, Paddy, Paddy Miller. I don't know if you know Paddy, he's old, he's old man's getting the bar 67. Aye, aye. I gave Paddy my tickets that night because I dealt COVID and uh, everybody keeps talking about it and I'm like, oh, that's the one I missed, man. Aye, Fucking God. raging. It was raging. Great. But the, the other one was the 6 2 game when Henrik scores that. Henrik scores that goal um, was brilliant and Sutton and all that score in their lane. Honestly, the game just started. Uh, Bobby Petrov <coughs> was in that game as well. Lambert, Petrov. I, I mean, it was just, it was brilliant. But I think it was important, not just the game, because it was more than just a game. It was setting down a marker early, because I think Rangers won everything the year before and we finished 20 points behind them. Aye. Aye, they, they won the treble and got scalped. Then Martin O'Neill came in, won the treble, and we started it. And Rangers won the league the following year as well. And then I, I think, think Martin O'Neill, that was the first old firm game. And, it uh, was. And Martin was. O'Neill had to mo- put a marker down to give us, the fans, the belief, and the players the belief. And we done it, and it was first class. We got scudded the next game, but the race Five was and the, Five they were one, two good aye. teams, they? were two good teams. They were, mate, aye. I remember that six one. In fact, the five one game that big Tory Andrew Flo scored, I'm sure, at, at Ibrox. Is that right? And they skipped, aye, they beat us five one, aye. 12, 12 million quid, that big chicken was. Van Rodkos scored, I know, I was at the game, aye. Aye. What, what about, um, what about Ibrox then? What's your, what's your favourite one there? Oh, that's a hard one. I've been going back and back. The one, I, I wasn't at it because I was in the playoff, as I told you. The one where, uh, what was it, 5 1? So 5 1, where, was he Lustig. Lustig. I was the at it, but Aye. I was kind of watching it on the bus going to the playoff semi final, trying to be all professional. <laughs> Sitting there, I was the at it, and I'm like, absolutely first class. The only problem is, we kept doing it that much, we get banned. No, I mean, hey, that's it. That's it, and they can say what they want. That's that's the reason it happened because of that. There's nothing, nothing there. What what about? Have you been to quite a? Do you follow them abroad as well? Have you been? To, aye, I think I, I seen you. You're at Madrid, weren't you? Aye, I was at Madrid. Kate's still no happy about it. Was seven days. It was five days in Santa Pons, <laughs> and then I crossed to Madrid. I, I just told the other Celtic fans there that for every game, <laughs> go to go, you know what I mean. <laughs> aye, um, listen, I don't. I don't think you'll be. I don't think you'll be uh, in a few, man. I think there'd have been a few doing that anyway, definitely. Aye, but the, the last day in the Dublin on Santa Ponza goes tickets up. She's got season tickets in the Madrid end. So, All right. So I went out to my pal's house and Michelle and the Dubliner gave us the tickets. So that was absolutely first class. So that's why that's why we went over there. But uh, have you been in the Dubliner on Santa Ponza? I have, mate. I, the, the brother-in-law sings in there every year. Um, Who's that? Gary Campbell. Aye, aye. Or is that the best bar in the world? Up? Aye, Gary. Gary does, um, may as well give a wee plug. 
Uh, he's on Facebook, Gary Campbell, Irish singer. I think he was in Murphy's not that week, but he does the Bar 67 in Lanzarote. Right. And then he goes to Santa Ponza for a couple of weeks. Is it here in Dublin or aye? Aye, he was in the Dublin on me. Aye, he was in Bar 67 in Lanzarote. He goes to, he's done Gran Canaria and Spain. And There's them all. Aye, Martin, sing Martin Higgins sing, sings up to, because I've got the kids, so I try and stay out of two in the morning, but I end up getting carted about one. So aye. Martin does to about 12, I think, and then the other singer comes on. So we hear aye, a couple think, of tunes and then we're away. I think, I think, he, I think his longest stint was about six weeks the other year, maybe the year before COVID. Right. Um, he, he, he works offshore, Gary, so he just kind of bounces about all over the place. But I check Gary, boy, uh, right. Gary Campbell, Irish singer, he's on, he's on Facebook. He sings all Scotland and Ireland and Spain and all that. So, aye, he's a good chanter. A good chanter. I'll, I'll add him shortly. Aye, ah, you'll see it. I think, I think that's his page, Gary Campbell, Irish singer. All, all his dates and that are up for the Dublin and that this year as well, I'm sure. Right, sure. Whenever yeah. he's there. Um, well, it's been your, your three. What, what else I meant to ask you was, when I started this, I always spoke about the, the Celtic supporters clubs as well. Were you ever affiliated to a, a supporters club growing up Aye, as well, getting the bus and that? Aye, so I, I started off with me and my cousin Stephen, uh, and I used to I used to go on the bus when I was about 10. So Stephen was in 14 and 10, we went away to, uh, I was on the Elders bus, sorry, it was a Kimberley bus, and then there was a four, and they went to Elders uh, aye, Steve, the Kimberley, I know the Kimberley, aye. Aye, Stevie Cannon used to run it, uh, and me and my cousin used to go there. And remember, do you ever remember going to Time Castle and you're away up in the farms, miles away? Aye. Right aye. up the back? Aye. It was about a five-mile walk, well, it felt like that, because my wee legs wouldn't <laughs> move. But a five-mile walk down to the ground and then off, trying to get tickets. And by the way, what, what I would say is, I know, you've got to remember, we were getting scudded these games. You're walking uh, down there under the bridge. Big Wally Faulkner was playing. You were, we, we won 1-0. You're getting scudded 3-1. Honestly, all these games. and When, when we were bro growing up, we weren't they successful? So it, was hard, it was hard being a Celtic fan. Oh, it was brutal, mate. It was brutal. Uh, I'm 41 this year. You're not that far apart age-wise. So uh, I, I kind of started remembering Celtic for just, just kind of centenary. I've got wee memories and then and into the ten years, mate, of the rotten mob winning winning the nine in the row, man, was fucking horrendous. Horrendous. It was and so bad. It, uh, aye. And doing it the uh, what you call it, sack the bold and Fergus coming in. We were doing aye. it the Friday night outside the main door, me, Jim, Stephen, Brian. No, I mean we were standing there every hammy. We were all standing down there singing. And then people were getting it was a laugh. People were getting in for a meal into the wall food. And we were shouting, if you have got if you have got a vote, vote for change and all that. They were looking <laughs> for a meal. <laughs> no, no, I mean it was just a meal. Uh, but good times, good times in the end, didn't it? Yeah, well, mate. Well, it's been your yeah. were you at Seville? Aye, it was at Seville again, that's what I'm saying. I was at St. John's one, one the, even that, we booked it. That was one of the main ones that I used to get everybody to speak about because see the stories I've heard about how folk got there. How they get tickets, what happens when they go there, how they get home and all that. It was fucking mental, man. Aye, um, we aye we he's, 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 he's a wee fan. He's a wee, 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 he's a we beat them, and I went like that to the boys. I'm booking the final. I'm booking it right now. And they're like, what do you mean? I went, I'm booking it. We're getting to this final. And they're like, no, there's too many. You've got to hang me. What, no, it might not have been. Was it the last time? We, we played it was Celtic Vigo, well. wasn't it? Yeah. Who was it? Was it Liverpool, Celtic Vigo, Vigo. Aye, aye. aye. So after the Liverpool, I booked it. So I said to the boys, let's get down and book it. We'll meet down the forge. And we'll get it booked. They're like, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, right? I went, right, everybody be done with their money and we'll get it booked. So we ended up booking Albufera. There was five years talk up. People were phoning. Just book me and all that. I'll give you aye, aye. If you're no here, you're no booked. That's it. We're booking. Uh, and we booked it. And uh, we went out to Albufera. And then we, we hired a bus that says on the bus, 
you cannot take out the country. And, uh, <laughs> and, and then my wee brother was flying, he was flying to Seville, and he went to the airport, he never came out on that flight with me. He, oh, sorry, this, this is what I want to tell you, forget about Seville, the, the game and all that. So you, you'll not believe how I got my ticket. So Jim uh, was at Dundee United at the time. I was at St. Johnson, and we went, all right, so Friday night fishing my mas. Jim comes in, and uh, Nene, Nene's have got a ticket, and we're sitting, we're eating our fish and all that, my ma had all the salad and all that, and that was fine, and Jim came in and went like that, right, I've got, I've got two tickets for the game, oh. I'm like that, looking, right, and uh, he's like, I can't, I'm taking one, because I'm flying in, in and out for the game, I'm in one day and back in it, he says, I, I wouldn't do that, my brothers and all that, so we'll need to do a toss-up for the tickets, uh, right. But the only fairest way to do it is the best of three, a toss up. But well, like, <laughs> me and Gerald are doing it. And, uh, and so Barry Nicholson and Scott Wilson got my tickets for them. Oh, right. So they, they got them because every Scottish club gets so many tickets. And they, won, right, the aye. Aye, they won the ballot. So Jim went like to Barry Nick, he made them. And Scotty got one, he kept it for Jim, right? So we ended up with two tickets for two Rangers, ex Rangers players. And, uh, and Gerald won the, he won the toss up. And uh, we're sitting in my ma's. And uh, I'm sitting with the heat doing, know what I mean? With the tears going down, I'm not going to this game. I can't believe it. And Gerald went, <laughs> uh, You went to Blackburn and Liverpool. Just you take the ticket, right? So I was like, I took it. I was like, Oh, brilliant, man. I've got it. But then I felt rotten. Had to get him one. So eventually earlier, I got him one. I got him one earlier. But we got on that minibus, we went across the border into Seville, and then Charlie and the boys was playing in the park that night. Right, yeah. Listen to that. Then we're sleeping in the van. I'm no joking. Lying with your head again in this van. Guys farting. Know what I mean? Storm. <laughs> and people walking by trying to get a kick. Slamming. Know what I mean? Opening the door and slamming it. <laughs> I was back to the game again. Aye, mate. See the stories I heard? It was unbelievable, man. I would like to... I've, I've spoken about that for Dana doing a special and trying to get maybe four or five different fans on for a, a civil one because the stories are brilliant mate oh, yeah. one, one, of the, one of the ones I heard the, my big mate Owen was a guy had tickets and the boy I think he'd wanted I don't know I think he said 500 euros and a Celtic fan said that's fucking shocking asking a Celtic fan for 500 euros and he said I paid 500 quid for it I only want my money back so they had a wee bit of two and throw and the guys, ah, you're a wanker, you're this, you're that. And the boys just fucking turned around. There was a guy walking by and he says, have you got a ticket for the game, mate? And the boy says, nah. He says, here, take that. He's like, ah. but for nothing, he said, aye, take it. Look me up on Facebook and get me a pipe and you get home. And the boy was calling him all this stuff. He was just stalling like that. He's like, he said, see if he'd have been nice to me. I'd probably end up giving him it for a hundred quid or something. But the guy was a prick and... Aye, mate, folks sleeping in streets. One of my mates camped out in one of the roundabouts just outside the stadium Aye. in a tent. And I think he said it was like 125 degrees and all that. Aye, I would love to do a special and get four or five different guys on that I know that stayed three or four hours away. A guy that camped out, maybe somebody like yourself, and Aye. have a wee, a wee round the table one and a wee pub or something. It'd be Aye, brilliant, brilliant. It's just unfortunate the game. We were so close and all, weren't we? No, mate. I know. Still yeah. rankles with me, mate. I've I, started... By the way, we'll never get over that. I heard Martin and Neil saying, uh, I, I think about it every three minutes, you know what I mean? He's Aye, still angry about it. It's hard, no, eh, mate. And I've, I've started this day, and right hand up to God, never watched the full game back. Not once. Have you not? No, I've seen the goals and wee bits and bobs, but I've just never been able to bring myself back. I think I've maybe watched a wee bit of it then. You just know that bit's coming up with Baldy and Douglas and that, and you're going, nah, I can't watch the rest of it, man. It's nah. too hard, isn't it? And it's like, it's hard. Bit what's it this year? 20th anniversary? Yeah. Sutton missed like three or four weeks before it and played the final, didn't he? And then he was right. taking cramp for about 60 minutes. It was roasting, wasn't it, that night? Ah, it was unbelievable, man. It was unbelievable. Right, mate. That's that's an hour and five minutes for like that. That's what happens, mate. No Aye, mate. Aye, mate. It flies in. Honest to God. We'll, we'll definitely need to get a wee part two about other stuff, but best of living, mate. Hardest <laughs> question in the hardest question in the podcast. Aye, um, best of living. First, 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 
Before you get into your 11, who, who would your manager be? Who's your favourite manager? Martin O'Neill. Martin O'Neill? Martin O'Neill, why? Martin O'Neill. But uh, what I would say again is, well, I, I've liked every Celtic manager. Every one for, I, I was through, I liked them all. Um, they've all had their strengths and weaknesses, but I think a lot of them have done great jobs. Even uh, you look through and Lennon, I don't like the way he's been treated with some Celtic fans. He's won a lot, a lot of trophies. He's, he's in, the guy's a, the guy's a Celtic legend, mate. Aye. I don't care where they say. Listen, you can have your opinion, you can leave under a wee bit of a cloud. Same with Brendan Rodgers. The way he left was the way he left was shocking, mate. But that's that's when I started taking my my boy to the fact that was some of the best days of my life. My wee boy was only nine trophies out of nine. You know what I mean? I think the boat was gonna be back there in terms Aye. of I was, I was pissed off and I don't know, mate, if it's just getting a wee bit older than that, that shit like that doesn't bother me as much anyway. You know what I mean? That's right. Doesn't it? We could go on all night. We could go on all night about it, mate. No, I mean we could go on all Aye. night. You could, um, mate, you could. Hey, but but um, I'm looking I'm looking forward to your your formation, mate, since you're a manager. I don't think I've oh, got a manager on yet. Mate, honestly, I've been I've been chopping and changing it. I was trying to get everybody in. I had fifteen players on at one point. I'll give you three subs if you want, mate. I'll give you three subs if no, you want. No, no, let's let's, let's just do it. I'll change it once I'm half, but uh, seen a lot of good goalkeepers. Um and I just think this guy uh, at one point, I think at one point during his time at Sale, he was probably the best in the world, but he was mental. Uh, I'll go with Boric in goal. Yeah. Um, yes, so Boric Brown, I've seen Pat Bonner, seen loads of them all the way through. <laughs> Uh, Foster done well. Craig Gordon was excellent, and also we've had a, Aye, a good few goalies. But I think Boric is a pick of a lot. I think um, I think Boric, Boric was Boric's talent was a wee bit overlooked because he was a head case. Aye, but his shot stopping that was absolutely second to none. Man, brilliant. he was a phenomenal goalkeeper. Brilliant, brilliant, great to watch as well. I no, I love Boric. I loved him. Um, I'll go a four four two. Old so school, like so that. Close the back, I'm going to go uh, Jackie McNamara, the right back. I seen the tail end up, Danny McGrain. I was at the 1986 game where we won the league, but I was right. very young. I was very young. I didn't see enough of Danny McGrain. I'm the same, um, mate. I'm I the didn't same. see enough of him, so it'd be unfair to me to put him in the team. I remember Tam Burns came in and signed him for Dunfermline, Jackie. I, had, I was right. at his first game. He played Falkirk. I was at that game at Brockville, his first ever game. For Celtic, I think he forgot his book. He signed, he signed that. He signed that morning. Aye. He played that day. Aye. He signed that so, morning and played that day. That's right. Aye. So it made so, new books. I fuck all, didn't he? No, no, it made books. He had the books. Right, aye. And he was brilliant. He had a formidable partnership with Simon Donnelly. He was up and down. An excellent player. Really, really liked aye. him. So go and a, a former Celtic captain as well. So um, no, I like Jackie. So Jackie in there. The uh, centre back, I'll go Van Dyke. Um, I thought he was a Rolls Royce when he played with Celtic. Uh, he used to take the free kicks and everything. He was bombing out of the, the back. So I always knew that he would go to bigger and better things, you know. Um, and knew he's the best in the world. So, um, no, he's going to be in, in the team. The the, the left centre-back, I've got a couple. But we've had a few good centre-backs over the period, right? Um, just looking at the shape and looking beside them. Paul Elliott's one that didn't he? Oh, aye. He's been in oh, loads, mate. He's been oh, in one of the best 11s, man. Paul Elliott. I think he had a wee financial thing with the club and left after about a year and a half. D tell me this. Did we swap Paul Elliott for Cascarino? Plus money, no? I'm talking nonsense. No, you might listen. You might be right. I don't know. Because he was back to the south and then I think we swapped Cascarino for Tom Boyd. But I don't know. I might be talking nonsense. I was talking about that today. Uh, Elliot was one, and but I like Big Bobo Baldy. Love Big Bobo, man. I like. I, lo Big I love. Bobo. I love Martin O'Neill's back three. Valhar and Mialbe and Baldy were formidable, man. I I liked him. Um, so I don't know if I'd have Big Virgil letting Big Baldy go and whatever. Uh, Elliot was there a year and a half. Bobo was there about five to seven year. I think I'll go with Big Bobo, right? I'm making Big the call. Bobo. I'm going Big to go Bobo, Bobo Baldy, right? Uh, in there. Uh, left back, I had a lot of good left backs. Uh, I'm just, but I'm going to go Tierney. I like Tosh. Uh, Tosh McKinley was good. I remember Dovchek. 
Uh, Alan Thompson was a left wing back. Uh, 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 I'm going to go with Tierney in there. Uh, I think he done extremely well uh, for Celtic. Done brilliant. Had a few injury problems and we probably sold them at the right <coughs> for both, I would say. We get good, good money for him. Uh, he done well. And I like seeing boys break through the academy. I like it. I like his talent. I like his sign. I like his playing young boys rather than going abroad and getting talent I've never heard of. I like to play our own players. So, uh, Tierney's in there for me. Good and back five, five, mate. Good back five. Don't fancy then, playing against that, Mark. Uh, I'll go across the... Oh, this is hard, man. This is this is really brutal, tough. isn't it? Brutal, uh, man. It's, it's brutal because you're you're hitting all the different permutations, right? But uh, for the night, and he did not play there, and I'll tell you a wee story about him in a wee second. But on the right, I'll go for the Canio. Uh, the Canio. Was... Well, he's all, he's always controversial, mate. But I would say I've probably done twenty twenty five of these, and he's probably been in about seventy five percent of the teams, mate. Oh. Take, 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 taking away all the shite that comes with him, what a football player, man. Aye, the Canio was, uh, I'll play him wide right, but uh, just a quick one before we go. Billy Stark took her at St. John's when I was there, and I went, that's Starky, how was the Canio? Tell me about the Canio, and he's like, unbelievable. I says, no, I was at the games, I seen him, Starky, man, what a player. I says, how was he in training and all that? He went, the fittest, the best. The most dedicated professional right. I'll ever get and all that. He says, in fact, David Pleat phoned me when he left to go to Sheffield Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday, all right. And he, and he started, he was telling me, right, so Chris, he was at the time. And he says, uh, David Pleat says, I've seen Paolo, how is he? Starkey obviously just said the same as he told me. Dedicated pro, unbelievable <laughs> ability, scores goals, uh, what a signing you've got. So David Pleat says, well, I've got Paolo. He'll play in the right, right wing, Carboni in the left, and Andy Booth through the middle. He says, uh, I think that is a front three. Starkey went, ah, ah, yeah, it sounds good. He said, but Paolo no play in the right. <laughs> <laughs> he says, what do you mean? I've signed him as a winger. He says, I know. We signed him as a winger enough. But he wants to play through the middle. And then once he gets there, he'll just go through the middle. And uh, Chris he was telling me, he says, he'll no play wide. So, eh, uh, Chris he to- says that Billy Stark and, that, and Tommy Burns used to call a meeting, the players were there. He says, and they were walking up to the wall food, and all the players were walking back down the stairs. There's a meeting in the dressing room. So Stark and Tommy Burns are like, we've no called a meeting. What's the meeting for? And they've been into the dressing room, and uh, the canyon was stood up and went like, right, just so everybody knows here, right, just so everybody knows, I, I want it clear so everybody can see this. Pierre and Cadet don't pass the ball to me. Just so everybody knows that. And they're all out looking about him. They know I'm going to score. They'll no pass the ball to me because they know I'm going to <laughs> score all the time. And all the players are just looking about like, this guy's a madman, you know what I mean? But uh, I think that's the type of character he was. But he was there uh, long enough. But he's going to get a place in my team, right, Paolo? Uh, carry uh, argue with me. And in the middle, uh, the only number eight for me for Selle. Uh, and that's Paul McStay. Paul yeah. McStay, and, and and I said that in the work girl, and I was saying to him, what about McStay? Nobody ever goes like that you. Don't put McStay in it. Nobody. Nah, nah. So Paul, I, I think they kind of folk that were born in about the same time as us. I was 82. If, if, if you're born anywhere for around about the kind of late 70s, moving into the 80s, McStay's in, McStay's in every team, man, without a shadow of a doubt. If he's no, if he's no in it, who else would you put in it? He's no, got the to maestro, be, the maestro, got and, to be man. And going forward, the maestro could have played in any team. So like all the like you get the foreign players that come in and play for Celtic, they come in and out when Yama and all that. They, they're no uh, Paul McStay is a better player yeah. than any of them, and he could play yeah. this day and age absolutely no problem. Hundred um, percent. Beside him. I, honestly, I was trying to get Brown McGregor in it. I was looking back oh. and bam, but I went through them all right. And just from a personal point of view, and Mr Celtic, we spoke about him all night. Uh, Tommy Burns is in there for me. Um, just a terrific man, player, and Celtic man. And I couldn't have him no in the team. So I'm going to put Tommy Burns in there. Uh, some people will say maybe no the best player, but 
I, I learned that the kid on back heel that Tommy Burns used to be. I used to do it myself. I remember aye, from the back. Aye, aye. And even when he was at Celtic, he used to do the one, flick it that way and go that way. That was the first time I seen it. So, uh, Tommy Burns in there. Uh, on the left, that, that was a hard one. Um, but I think you forget as time goes how good guys were. Um, you and I look at it and just for the balance of the team, and he wanted to play centre mid as well, and he did. And he... Uh, my period gone with my band for the Ibrox at the time. I'm going to go John Collins. Johnny Collins. Johnny we, drew, we drew one each that day, didn't we? Aye. We scored, scored a free kick. Aye, but did he not score one in the next game or not? And then he, he always scored and then the, the one Ali Maxwell dropped, he faked it and then put it in. in the, That's right. That four Aye. Each game? Is that four Aye. Aye. That's the one Gorham saved it. for Pierre, wasn't it? Aye, I remember. Three each. Three each. Gorham saved for Pierre. John Collins scores. Toss puts it in. Um, uh, John Collins, I think, was a brilliant. Him and McStay kind of dragged that team through. And by the oh, way, we weren't yeah, successful. We weren't a successful team at that time. But he then went to Monaco. Um, and mind he dominated all the English teams in Europe and all that. He was uh, outstanding, man. An outstanding uh, player for I, I was I was lucky enough to see him at Goodison. I could do it at Goodison a lot. So I was lucky enough to see him a couple of times down there and all. Remembered that a wee bit there, and there was still some operator down there in the Premier League, man. Aye, and he, he was ripped, John Collins, man. He, oh. tried, he, he tried to get a hips and all the players fair look with him, didn't he? Aye. I think if him and Decani will get in there, get in there in their, their own room, you would need to separate them, man. Aye. All that, all that fitness part and all that. <laughs> Aye. I was trying to get Lubo in, I'm looking at Jota, and the, the other one I was saying, see the centre-back, I was thinking Carter Vickers, but he's just not been there long enough. Nah, I know, mate. I know that'll come. That'll, That'll come. come. So I, that's the next time. Uh, up front, uh, Larson. Larson, he, he just goes in. Um, he can't. Again, the way I've done it is I just went Boric, Van Dyke, McStay, Larson. Then I start, started building around about them. That's your um, spine, isn't it? I know. Larson. What I would say is, uh, as well, Henrik was not a massive favourite of mine because my brother Jim used to always play against him. So I, I was always want Jim to do... Good to hear. Well. You know what I mean? So uh, I loved him as a player. I thought he was outstanding in all the other games. But I, I didn't love, uh, I loved the Canio. I loved the Canio. I thought he's a player and I played wide. So I used to remember going around the back, practicing the fakes and all that that Paul had done. But he was just world class, when not he? Is. Uh, but I always wanted my brother to do well. So of I course. didn't love him at that point, uh, which is probably understandable. But Jim played against him. I think he still scored every game anyway, so uh, <laughs> that's that. Um, and then I think the partnership, Larson and Sutton, was brilliant. I was looking at McAvaney, you've got Dembele. That's who I had. That's who I had, didn't it? Yeah. Mine in your back, Boric, Jackie Mack, Virgil van Dyke, Bobo and Tierney was exactly the same as mine. Aye. And I had Henrik as well. And Sutton, as you say, mate, it's hard to say with Larson without saying Sutton, but I was a massive fan of Moussa Dembele. Aye, brilliant. Massive fan of me. I would love to see him back now. I don't think it'll happen with the weight season that, but... I but no, I, 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 what, see, the, the last and Sutton, I, I thought it was telepathic, see, the, the way they, they linked up. Like, the ball went into Sutton, he glanced at Henrik. Henrik lay off Sutton, played it wide. He, and then, uh, used to, they used to get in the, like that, and uh, this, the right back would play in. Sutton would dummy up to Henrik, and they would know where each other were. I thought... Sutton and Larson was a better partnership than Hartson and Larson. Oh, Hartson aye, was a Sutton was a total football player, man. He could play anywhere. Um, aye, he did. I think, I I think was, Sutton's probably the player I look back on the most. And no, I don't think he was ever under underappreciated, but when you look back at the, the run to Seville, some of the league games, even against Rangers, centre-half, centre-mid, centre-forward, if Big Hartson came in and he maybe sat out, he was a he was Martin O'Neill's best signing by a country mile man. And Martin O'Neill went through a period that he started drafting Lambert. Remember that was Petrov, Lennon, and Sutton. Said aye. Remember? Aye. Yeah. And then aye. they played. I I just thought he was a brilliant player, man. Uh, aye, but I was. I've got about another six elevens if you want name, but that's the easy. One. <laughs> easy, mate. We'll get another one. We'll definitely aye. get another one. Uh, <laughs> listen, if any of the boys or Jim or anybody you know. Fancy's coming on for a blather, mate. Batter in. Aye, and, uh, 
we're we're always on every Friday and and, and Monday and all okay just a Monday we talk about the game at the weekend and a Friday we sit and get a couple of beers and talk about the games coming up. So if you're ever free, mate, ping us a wee message on Facebook. You can jump ah, on. Just before we go, mate, um, the boy O has just signed. That's four in the transfer. Windy for Ange, mate. Nine points clear. Cup final coming up against Rangers. St Mirren in the game to get into the quarters. Just before we shoot, what do you think? The rest of the season, mate, you've quite I, I confident we're going to win a treble. I think the league's in the bag. I don't think there's Celtic are not going to lose uh, the game. Celtic are not going to lose four games and Rangers win everyone. So I think the league is comfortable. We just need to go and win the next few games and be solid in the league. I think the, yeah. the, the cup final again, uh, the new co, I think that'll be tight because I think they've got a wee boost uh, with a new manager. I think they're going to try and make a couple of signings. So I think it'll be tight and that horrendous part's not going to help um, if it surfaces like that. So I think it'll be tight. A cup final's always tight. Uh, hopefully we've got enough. I think middle to front, we, could, we should be too strong. Kent will cause us problems as he always does. I, I, the Rangers fans don't seem to like him. But I no, think, I, mean, I, think, I think he's very, very inconsistent. But he's a look, threat to us. Aye, look, looking at it without the green tint it specs on, mate. If Kent has a good game, he's going to cause you bother every single day of the week. Yeah. I, think, I think he's just a wee bit too inconsistent. And he's gold. His goals ratio is no great. His stats aren't great for assists and all that. But there's yeah. no take away from the fact the boys get talent. If <coughs> Johnson and Greg Taylor are not his game, he's causing you bother every day of the week without a doubt, man. On the St Mum game, I think we should take care of St Mum. So I would say the treble's on. But we're still a mile away from it. It's no, it, it, these things, as a manager and as a fan, they don't just happen. See, you win trebles, you actually need to go and win them. Nobody gifts you them. Nobody's going to roll on them let you win them. You, you get through many challenges. You've got injuries, loss of form, people moving on. So loads and loads of things go again. You. So it's, you can never say we're going to win the treble. We're in, we're in with a good chance. If we keep progressing the way we are, then... I think it could be on, but I think it's a tough game in the final. I don't think it's a gimme. Andy I think uh, it's kind of sell on. Aye, definitely, mate. Listen, that's been a pleasure, mate. Thanks very much. Listen, I, could, I, could, I could sit for another two hours, man. This is this is easy for me, man. I love talking about football and sell it. I just talk about sell it all the time. I'm going to talk about them again. Um, to doddle, mate. Only to doddle. Just let us know, mate. That was brilliant. Mate, listen, I will, I'll, keep, I'll keep a wee eye on and see how we're going on in regards to getting into the football. Maybe get you to jump on a wee, a wee guest appearance every once a month on a Monday if you want and give a wee bit of from a managerial point of view because we we've been doing this for te, uh, two years, mate, and we just wing it and talk shit. As I said, Aye. I've not even got any notes done for the night. Me and you have spoke for an hour and a half, mate, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. So, Aye. listen, Aye. thanks very much, buddy. Um, I'll be in touch. Good luck with the, with the job hunt. Hope sun comes up for you good... Uh, in the next wee while, mate, son, it suits you and your, your family and you get back into the game, mate. You seem too good to be out it. So, <coughs> take care anyway, all mate. All the best. All the best, mate. Thanks for everybody Thank watching. We'll be back. And, uh, he's on Friday night trips on the, the, the live show on Friday. 